Hello, my name is Mark Andrew Sahati and I'm an orthopaedic surgeon employed by Health Education Northeast in Newcastle in England. I'm talking to you about our JVGS publication entitled Periacetabular Osteotomy for Developmental Dysplasia of the Hip and Femoracetabular Impingement. Considering the rationale for this study, my co-authors, lead author for the project Richard Holliman, the members of the Non-Arthroplasty Hip Registry User Group and senior author AJ Malvia, all felt that despite the publications on periacetabular osteotomy, there was a paucity of data when considering patient reported outcome measures for adults undergoing PAO surgery. It was this that led to us to conduct the study. There also appeared to be limited data when considering PAO for impingement, secondary to acetabular retroversion, when compared with dysplasia. This is a study that was undertaken using data from the NARF Plasti Hip Registry in the UK, or NAHR. This has just shy of 13,000 patient pathways, and I'd like to thank the NAHR group and the 102 surgeons that have contributed to the registry since its inception that made the publication possible. The conclusions we drew from the study were that PAO is an effective surgical treatment for both male and female patients with symptomatic dysplasia or impingement, and that such surgery results in significant improvement in patient reported outcome scores. The problems we faced with the study related to the loss of patients to follow up. However, given the large number of procedures recorded in the registry, we are still able to draw meaningful conclusions and able to demonstrate positive outcomes in the short term at 6 months, 12 and 24 months. Considering any unexpected or surprise findings, it was interesting to see that patients with impingement had lower baseline preoperative scores when compared with patients undergoing surgery for dysplasia and that these were statistically significant. With both of these being related to a morphological abnormality, one would have expected the preoperative scores to be similar. Despite this, both groups saw statistically significant improvements in patient reported outcome measures. And therefore, we feel that clinicians considering their own practice can utilise our findings from the study to recognise that PAO is an effective treatment for both dysplasia and impingement due to retroversion. They can also utilise the data where we have looked at specific factors that may affect outcome scores, such as pathology, age, sex and BMI. And this can help provide patients with more information during the clinic consult or consenting process. Reflecting on any unanswered questions, the study ultimately considers outcome scores, but does not consider the impact on radiographic findings nor the natural history of the disease and subsequent need for total hip replacement. Large comparative studies with medium to long term follow up would therefore be helpful when considering future research. In summary, we feel that this publication makes a considerable contribution to the data on hip preservation surgery and helps surgeons undertaking such surgery with their decision making, consenting and discussion with patients and highlights that such surgery is a feasible option for those groups that we have considered.